Hi, my name is Jim McMahon, and what I want to do tonight, I just want to go through a couple of things about how God builds things in your life. All right, and the name of this video is A Life Builded Without Hands. Okay, and what that means is we're talking about how God builds your life. If you don't trust in yourself, and you trust in God, and you trust in the Word of God, and you use the Word of God to build your life, then it will be God that will have built it. And then you can know that it's going to stand, okay? Uh, but the first thing I want to do here is I want to go to Hebrews. I want to go to chapter 3, and I want to go to verse 4. It says, For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. Okay? And God did these things without hands. All right, Jesus Christ is the stone made without hands. The builders rejected has now become the head of the corner. Okay, and in Daniel... It talks about Jesus Christ, uh, that the Antichrist stands up against the prince of princes, and that he's going to be broken without hand. Why? Because Jesus Christ is going to destroy him with the sword out of his mouth. Okay? So, when I'm talking about that your life is builded without hands, if you use the word of God, we're talking about walking in the spirit, and as you walk in the spirit, God actually purges and prunes you. So, what I'm talking about here, if you want to get sin out of your life, then you walk in the Spirit, you walk in the love of God, and you read the Word of God, and then as the Spirit of God enters into you, you can't help but speak those things which we've seen and heard, and now the abundance of the heart, the mouth, speak it. You know, the, the Word of God is going to be coming out of you. It's light, okay? So as you pour this light into you from glory to glory, which is talking about the Word of God into us, that we show God in us till He comes back, that we are the light of the world, then our life is going to be built by God. And it's the same for the churches, it's the same for your family life, your life at work, everything. If you use the Word of God to build your life, if you walk in the Spirit of God, you will fulfill the commandments of God. If you walk in love of God, then you're going to serve your brothers and sisters. All right, You're going to be purged and pruned of sin because God is going to cut those things out of your life for you. Now, he can do it the hard way where he punishes us and these things get out of our life. Or if we choose to walk in the spirit of God, then these things will be cut out of our lives because the things that are of God are going to be filling up our life. And we're going to have time for those other things. And I can say this perspectively, and it may be anecdotal here to you, but the bottom line is this, that God's word is true. So therefore, when you keep filling yourself with the word of God, then that is what's going to be coming out of you. Now, we still have the flesh. All right. So since we still have the flesh, we still have the propensity to walk in the flesh. So we're supposed to redeem the time because the days are evil and there is no good that thing dwelleth in me. That is in my flesh. So therefore, if I'm not redeeming the time by the word of God, then I'm be fulfilling the lust of the flesh. All right. And we're not supposed to make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So we're not supposed to leave time in our lives. We should order our lives in a way that it's filled with the things of God. And if we do this, then we're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh, and our life is going to be built by God himself. And we know it's going to stand. Now, the foundation of everything in the Word of God is Jesus Christ. The Bible itself is about Jesus Christ saving the world. All right? Now, the Bible does tell us who God is, and to know God right, is to have eternal life, and it is eternal life. That we know the mercy of God. So if we know the length, the width, and the depth of the love of God, that's because we have eternal life. We understand who God is and that we have that life through him and through his son who came to die for us. And then his blood bought us back as a ransom from death. Okay. Now I'm going to go through a few other verses here. And I'm going to relate these ideas. Um, the first thing I'm going to go through is John, uh, the first epistle of John. And where it talks about whoso, know, whoso keepeth his word, right? In him verily is the love of God perfected. And I'm just going to go ahead and read you the verse. Uh, it's 1 John uh, 2, 5. Great epistle. Great epistle. All right. And it says, But whoso keepeth this word in, in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we are in him. Now God tells us to be perfect. Okay? But it's not the commandments that make us perfect. We can't keep the commandments. What he's telling us to do here is, and even when he talks about it, in Matthew, when he's saying be perfect, that he's talking about walking in the love of God. Now, if we do that, then it's not going to have any ill will to our brothers or anybody else. All right? We're going to fulfill the commandments of God by walking in his spirit. If we walk in the love of God, 
We're going to desire to do those things that are of the Spirit of God that is in us, rather than fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right? Now, this is the same thing that James is talking about. Now, you may not get this connection, but if you look at what it is to walk in love, is to walk in the Spirit. Okay? So if we walk in love of God, then we are walking in His Spirit. And also, if we have faith in God, now this goes to James here, and I'm just going to go ahead and read you a couple of verses, but if you have faith in God and you walk in that faith, then you are also going to fulfill the commandments. So you can actually look at it as the first commandment, walking in the love of God, and you fulfill that to, to love God with your whole heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your being, your strength, everything, okay? And that also, when we walk in love of the brethren, or when we walk in love of our neighbor, then we're going to fulfill the commandment that God has given us the second commandment that Jesus Christ said. And, and on this, the whole law hangs, these two things, okay? So I'm going to go to James here. Now, a lot of people that are not saved, and even some saved people might have some problems understanding these verses here from James, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start with James 2.14 because it, it is the verse that a lot of people have issue with. It says, What did the prophet, my brethren? Though a man say he has faith and have that works, can faith save him? If a brother and sister be naked and destitute of daily food. Now, if you look at this verse, it says, What did the prophet, my brethren? Though a man say he has faith and have not works. Okay, now you can look at this saying to these guys that are his brethren that he's writing this letter to. So what did the prophet, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? Now, if a brother and sister are naked and destitute of daily food, right, can my faith save them if I don't act upon that faith? No, but just the same way that if they had faith and that I'm naked and destitute of daily food, that they don't act upon that faith, then it can't save me either. Okay, so if someone else has faith and I need things and they don't walk in that faith and they just say, be you warmed and filled, that doesn't help anyone. Okay, and we know that works are good and profitable to men. Okay, and that is why we're even supposed to be baptized. All right, now we are baptized by the Holy Spirit and washing, regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost. We are washed and cleansed in the blood of God. This is the process of sanctification of the spirit and the soul, all right? Now, with the washing of the water, the word actually does this because we receive the spirit of God into us by believing it. And the same thing happens to our flesh when we read the word of God and then we are preach the word of God that it's perfect in converting the soul. And that includes the flesh and the spirit. Now, a saved person, their spirit and soul are preserved in Christ. Our life is hid in God in Christ. But the flesh is not. And the flesh still needs things. So works being good and profitable to men, if we have faith, then we should walk in that faith. And therefore, we are fulfilling the commandment of God in this way. And also, it is just the same thing as walking in the Spirit. As we walk in love, you know, that we're also going to be walking in the Spirit. Because that is walking in the Spirit, is walking in love. And therefore, we're going to fulfill the commandments of God. And that is the same thing it goes. So it's the first and the second commandment. And it's all fulfilled in these things in that we walk in the love of God. We walk in the Spirit. Now, again, going back to the point of the video was that if we do this, then our life will be builded by God. It's going to be silver and gold and precious gems, and it's not going to be wood, hay, and stubble. But since we have the flesh, we're still going to have some wood, hay, and stubble because some of the things we do in this life are not going to have eternal value. All right, now I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 real quick, and I'm going to read you what Paul is talking about here, that a man should be take care how he build thereupon. He's talking about the foundation of the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, in salvation. And that we should take care how we build thereupon because we're going to be judged by these things at the judgment seat of Christ. And we don't want to lose those things which we have wrought. So therefore, if we're living a holy life, a good and righteous life through walking in the spirit of God, Therefore, we're going to receive a lot of rewards. We don't want to fall away from this. So you could build a great life, but then at the end you fall away and then you're going to lose a lot of those rewards that you're going to get. All right, especially, you know, if you don't keep the works in the end, you're not going to rule and reign with Christ. You know, there's things that are, we have caveats here to what it is that we're going to receive as rewards. And if we don't fulfill these things all the way to the end, then we're not going to get rewarded for them with the full reward. All right. Now, Paul talks about it as running a race. And that we are running a race for a crown. But this is something that's not going to fade away. It's going to be given to us by God. And it is eternal. Um, let me get to this ver or these verses here real quickly. All right. Let 
And it says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I've laid, I laid the foundation, and other man buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet as so by fire. So what these verses are telling us is that if we walk in the Spirit of God, God is going to build our life. Now, he's not specifically saying this in these verses, but what I'm getting at here, and again, back to the point of the video, is that our life is going to be built without hands. God will have built our life. We trust in him and use his word and walk in the spirit of God. Then he is going to build our life. And then as we're building off the foundation of God, which is Jesus Christ, which is salvation and the word of God itself, then we build upon this. We build upon the foundation with the word of God. We start with the word of God, which is the beginning of our confidence that we hold unto the end, that we keep unto the end. Now, I'm not quoting this directly, but it's Hebrews where he's talking about when you hear the word of God, then as you're hearing the word of God, it's giving you confidence. It's being able to convince you that it is truth. And then again, God gives us the increase. So therefore, then we reach that culmination of this confidence that we're being built up with by the word of God, because faith cometh by hearing and that by the word of God. And that leads into salvation in Jesus Christ. That is the end. The end of our faith is salvation in Christ. And it says, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. I believe this is talking about faith. That God is performing this work in us and he does that by his word. And that he is going to do this until the day of Jesus Christ in salvation assuredly. However, if we do not walk in the spirit of God, then we're not going to get all the rewards that he wants us to have. And God wants us to get the full reward. But the only way that we can do that is to walk in the Spirit for the rest of our life. So if you're a, just a man or a woman or even, even a child, that you're going to be doing these things. You're going to be walking in the Spirit of God. Learn what it is that God wants from you. And that as you learn the milk of the Word and you grow in the knowledge, the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you grow in the faith. And as you do this, God will have built in your life. And the same goes for the church. The same goes for your family. The, fa the same goes for your work. Everything that you do can be built by God if you allow him to do it. But the only way to do that is to read this word and to fill yourself up with the spirit of God because that is what's going to be expressed. Because again, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking, and whatever's in your heart, that is what's going to come out of you. Not just out of your mouth, it's what's going to come out of you in general. So therefore, the light of God is going to be shown in you from glory to glory. Again, where God's glory is revealed in you today. Now, the sons of God are going to have, this is going to be manifest later when we get the body that we get, the immortal body, which again, a body that's made without hands, all right, that, which is in heaven. This thing again, again, made without hands, talks about this, and I believe it's uh, one, of the, one of the letters of the Corinthians, excuse me. But either way we're getting to here is that we allow God to build our life. And we allow God to build the church. We allow God to build our soul winning program. We allow God to build everything. And we can do that because we as an individual are going to fail. Okay? If we want to succeed, then we need to use the word of God and we need to allow him to build our lives. And if we allow God to build our lives, then we know that thing's going to stand. Because who can defeat God? No one. No one can defeat God. So therefore, that is what I'm getting to in this video. And I just wanted to express that. And I did, I did say a lot of stuff here, but in a very short amount of time here. But in the end, what I'm getting to and the main point of this is to allow God to build your life. And it will be made without hands. And its builder and maker will be God, just like the city that we seek after. The city that is built without hands. It's made without hands whose builder and maker is God. The one that we're going to if we're saved. And that is what we want our lives to be made like. We want God to have builded our lives. I thank you. God bless.